this is Digital Lady Sid, and today I'm going to do a quick video on the Topaz Studio 2 interface. Uh, recently, Topaz came out with an update to studio, the regular Topaz Studio, what they call One now, and it is a totally different interface, so I thought I would run through exactly how to use this new program, what it looks like, so you can understand where all the things are that were in your Topaz Studio One, or if you're new to the program, um, what a cool program it actually is. So let's get started here. Um, I did this elephant in Topaz Studio Two. That's pretty much the final. And there were a lot of little extra things I did in Photoshop to it afterwards because that's how I like to use it as a plug-in to Photoshop. But it actually has a standalone version that I found works very good too. So don't you know, it's not, it, it doesn't matter your, to your preference how you want to do it. So I'm going to turn off all of these changes I did in Photoshop and turn off the original version of Studio that I did. And we're going to start with the background. Now the first thing I always do is I duplicate the background. So I do a Control J, mainly because anytime you add plug-in information onto a layer, um, there's often the chance that at the after you've finished using the plugin and you come back into Photoshop something didn't come out quite right and you want to paste a little bit of the original back into it mainly I'm talking about eyes or little detail areas that just didn't you know that got wiped away by a certain effect so what you do is you just uh, then take copy your back your original background and move it up to the top and add a black layer mask and paint back what you needed to add that sharpness back in but most of the time I don't have to do it but there are times it has been very helpful so we're going to do a duplicate on that and then we're going to go into the topaz interface so you go to filter and topaz labs has all your original plugins and everything in it but topaz studio has studio 2 now and that's where we want to. this new interface is actually loads very quickly which I really like they have updated it two or three times which since they came out with it a week ago and they have several new updates coming that are going to make it even better so I'm very excited about about that that they're actually paying attention and keeping this updated so right now this um, image I had to um, first thing I did was to add AI clear so you go into this filter and here are your add looks we're going to talk about that later add filters is all the individual filters everything across the top is pretty much the same as it, it has been in other you know Topaz Studio and in other plugins that you use you know how do you view it and all that kind of thing how do you apply it so first thing we're going to do open it, this up and you can see all your filters are now alphabetical which I love uh, they're broken down into essentials, creative, stylistic. If you mark some of them as faves, you can just click on that and just your favorite filters will come up. It's a really great thing. You could see what ones you applied recently. If you can't remember what you applied recently and want to do it again. Really nice stuff here. So first thing I always do, AI Clear. I still love AI Clear. I have AI Sharpen and it's wonderful and AI Clear is included in it also. But I still love having it right here in studio so I don't have to pop out and do all this other stuff. I, want, I like being able to do everything right in one interface. All I do is just use the default most of the time, but sometimes it's nice to have a little extra. Next thing I did was I added a basic adjustment because I didn't do anything in Lightroom in it. So it needed a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of contrast, clarity here maybe on the elephant, you know. Didn't do a lot with it because he was pretty sharp. Um, open up the shadows a little, darken the highlights a little like you do a little. That's fine. Don't need to do a lot to this. Now, notice that when I'm done using this filter, I can also change the opacity here in the blend modes, by the way, if I wanted to do something crazy with it, which I'm not, but you can. But you just hit this X. Now that seems like counterintuitive, like, oh shoot, I just, you know, deleted it. Well, you didn't. It's actually created a new layer up here. And to get those, that information back, you just double click on it and it shows up again. So click it out, done. 
This is also where you add your layer mask, where you get rid of it. There's the trash thing where you can turn it on and off to see what effect it had. Really handy. Pretty much basic stuff, but pretty nice to have. Okay, the thing that was most important to me in this image was to blur that background with all the tourists in the background. This, this little elephant, big elephant actually, was taken at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. And uh, people could stand on all different sides of him. I don't know how he feels about it, but very, they had several, I think they had five elephants actually, so it was kind of a nice exhibit. But this guy I kind of liked. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna add the blur. And in this case, it's just a Gaussian blur, which is just like in Photoshop, but I find it a lot quicker and easier to do here. So I, I just took it, and I don't remember what amount I used, but you can just kind of eyeball it and see what kind of blurs those people out a little. Okay, now the elephant looks kind of bad. I don't want to overdo it here, but we're gonna, we're gonna get those people kind of faded out. Okay, so there we are. Now, I want to add a layer mask to this so that I could still see the elephant in the foreground, but that background is still pretty out there. So what we do is we click on that mask, and I'm going to use a gradient filter. And as you can see with this gradient filter, the background is very sharp now because that means stop. Don't apply this filter to this. And the green means, yep, go ahead and apply it to this area. And the white is kind of in between. The white is how you move this thing around. Well, obviously, I want the green on top and the red on the bottom. So you have to actually spin it. And I usually just grab a handle and spin it. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. But once you kind of get it the way you want it, you just move the white handle. Now adjust it down to, you know, it's kind of like a transition in that one area. So you could see, I want his feet, this foreground area where he's standing pretty sharp because you know, that, that's what I want people to see. And I don't want to, be, to look at those people in the background. So that looks pretty good. So I say, watch this, apply. Now, obviously the elephant does not look good. So what we're gonna do is take this brush and we're going to paint back the elephant. Now you can see the red circle. This is just like in a Lightroom where you have a, an area of softness where with the, it, um, with the edge aware on right here, it will only go where the changes are between the light and the dark areas. And you know, um, Topaz has always had the best brushes by all means and they are going to be updating the brushes soon, which I am so excited about because they have the best. And listen to this, my computer is not running hard. With Lightroom, it runs hard when I use the brush. With um, many of the other programs, their brushes tend to take a lot of energy out of the CPU, so I am very happy with this. Now, the parentheses buttons are working right now on this because that's all I adjusted was the radius. They only work on the last slider that you used, and I'm hoping they're changing this. So if I made the transparency different and used these brackets, see how the brackets move it up and down now? Yeah, so you have to be a little bit careful. I always just do this stuff by hand. I just adjust it by hand. It's not a problem in my mind. So I just wanna make sure his belly is very much in focus. Um, his nose, there we go, there, let's just make sure up there, it's really nice and sharp, there, so I'm very pleased with the, okay, now over here you can see the mask I got, so I'm happy with that, so what do I do, well, I don't have to do anything, I don't have to do any more of this apply thing or anything, you only have to apply it if you're switching them around, and in this case, this is great, so I said great. So I'm checking the X box, and I'm ready to go on to another filter. And this time, I'm going to add the HSL. I did an HSL um, color tuning because it's way too green in my mind. So I'm going to take the greens, which you can see once again when you hover. You can see where the greens are affecting the image. I love this about Topaz. I'm going to make this pretty dull. 
and I'm like, uh, that's not really what I want, so maybe I need to change that. Ooh, look at that. Does it look more like he's out in the, the wilds where he should belongs? I think so. So I'm going to put just a little bit of that effect in. And I really like that. Now you're starting to feel like, hey, he's really out there in the, the grasslands where he likes to live. Okay, so um, I'm going to look at the yellows a little bit and see. I don't think yellow did much for it. Maybe it warmed it up a little bit to give it a little bit of that. But I don't want this applying to my elephant because he's going to look yellow-orange there. I don't like that. So what do we do? We create another mask. And this time we're going to do just the brush. I love the brush. you got to check out their color and their luma, luminosity ones, though. I, I mean, I use them all, all the time. This is such a great uh, grouping of uh, masking products that they have. So I, I personally think this is one reason why um, Topaz stands out from the other plugins because I believe this masking, I always felt all their masking is good and I'm hoping they'll bring their little detail brushes back and all these brushes that they had in some of their plug, their actual filter plugins that we were purchasing before. So I'm counting, I'm hoping that's what this new update to the uh, brushes are going to be. But as you can see, I pretty much did the whole elephant right there, and there he is. So that looks so much better. You can see, um, I don't know that I can tell how it looked with or without the, um, uh, the actual um, paint that was taken off here. But anyway, eh, maybe there is a way in the adjust. I don't know. I don't see that, though. Okay, well, I'm hoping maybe that'll be something, too, that you could tell where you've made your masking changes if you turn it on and off to see how, how it is affecting that. There may be a way to do it. I'm pretty new to the program right now. so. But as you can see, that has made a huge difference just getting rid of that color there. Okay, now we're going to add one more filter. And this time um, I'm going to add a texture onto this and... The texture is way down here at the bottom. Same texture. I used this one. I don't remember how strong it was, but I know I used that. And we'll just um, change that opacity down quite a bit so you don't see it so much. Okay, but it's still over the elephant, and I don't like that. But I kind of like that texture effect because it kind of blocks the people back there. So <clears throat> to, to fix this, we're going to add a mask. But this time, we're going to use the same mask we used on the HSL. So if I go on this mask, I'm going to click the three dots, click Copy. Then I go on this one, click the mask, click on the three dots, say Paste. And there he is. He is now there without all of that. And if I don't like the way it looks completely, I'll just take the brush and say, ah, maybe it didn't get it off of that head right, quite right there. We'll just try to make that a little better. Now, you can always fuss around with these quite a bit. This is why I love it. And if you do go into these adjust, if you look down here, you have a density thing. It's just like the properties thing in Photoshop, but you can adjust that density on this if it was just a little too much. Maybe I don't want it quite, you know, that stark. I can leave a little bit of that texture on. I can just make that a little bit less. So that's all you do. And you say apply again. Now, whenever I use these adjust mask things here, I have to hit apply. And then I can just close it up again. And it does look like I added a vignette. I don't know if I care right now. I'll see if I can do one quick. But anyway, that I just kind of wanted to show you, um, you know, what, what this does. So he looks pretty good there. And then you just say accept. And there he is. And it's pretty close to what I did before. I think I put a brown vignette in it instead of a black one. But pretty close. Okay, now I want to show you what you could do with this one. Um, oops, I left on what I'm going to show you. This is a one of my favorite pictures to practice on. It's called ISO Republic Guitar Man, and I'll give you a link to that if you want it because I just think it's a great picture for practicing. Go to Filter, Topaz Studio 2. There we go. And this time we're going over to Add Looks, which is your old presets. They're now called Looks. 
and there's just everything that you ever did or had before. If you want to bring over all your presets from Topaz Studio One, you go to Help, and there's a Migrate Custom TS1 presets that you can click, and it just brings them over in two seconds. So all my presets are over here now. Um, I'm sorting it by impression here because I use that impression on it. All my presets start with SJ, so that helps me find them. Uh, if I go to abstract, which is abstract look, which is the one I created when I worked on this, you can see there's an apply button. Now first it's going to show it to me. It's having to go through all the different filters that are in this look before it will show you what it's going to look like. And it takes a minute if it's a very complicated filter, which this one was. But it will show you in just a minute. There it is, exactly how it will look. It hasn't applied it. I have to hit the little blue apply to make it show up correctly. But I can hit another one now and I'll do the same thing. But since it takes so long, I won't. But you, you can see what, what this is doing. Now I want to apply it. When I apply it now, now I get the list. I get my abstract look. It may be closed up when you see yours. Just open it up and there's all the things that I have applied to it. Now it looks pretty bad, but when I started playing around with this, all I did was adjust that opacity back, and I thought I got a really nice look. I like that. I just, I just thought that was interesting. Now, you can add a filter on top of that. Watch this. Um, I put the AI, which is what you saw <laughs> earlier, but I put that on there. Take that opacity down just quite a bit, and look, what a pretty interesting, I mean, that just even added more to it. So without it, with it. Depends on what colors you like. But okay, I like it. I go check, accept, and there it is in Photoshop. And I can adjust it any way I want to. It's so easy to do. I just love it. I can change, you know, the blend mode on it to give it just a feeling, a little luminosity color to it, you know anything I want. It's a lot of fun. So I hope that gave you some ideas on how this interface works because I found it a little bit confusing myself when I first looked at it and they have added like a little histogram down in the bottom left corner now if you're missing that they're going to be adding a navigator. They've got like I said they're updating the mask brushes soon. I'm so excited about that. So there's a lot coming down with Topaz. I will probably do another video when they get those mask brushes over and show you how to use them because I just love brushes. And if you want to find out more about me, you can find me at my fun Photoshop blog at sidspix.wordpress.com. I have a tidbits blog where at digitalladysid.com where I just do fun things. And my website is sidjohnson.com. Um, you can find a link to the blog that goes with this video uh, below the YouTube. And I will try to do this more often. So talk to you later. Bye.